Hey guys, Steve Boyer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Turpets. Uh, you can see I have Von Hipper here. This is the build I currently use. Uh, long term I'm planning on putting Hyde, kind of a hybrid brawler uh, accuracy build on this particular ship and a few others in the line. But for now, due to the availability promotion orders, I go with the Von Hipper. I would prefer some accuracy in the ship. The ship isn't wildly inaccurate like some of the German battleships are, but boosting the accuracy on this thing keeps it relevant at all ranges, as you'll kind of see throughout this match. Now my relationship with the Turpets has been tumultuous. Some of you probably remember the stream where I accidentally bought it the day it was the campaign came out for like a hundred bucks or something, which I wasn't intending on doing, and <laughs> it didn't get me off on the right foot with the ship. Then, you know, shortly thereafter it becomes apparent that it's not working as intended. It's quite easy to settle this thing, despite being described on, you know, like the wiki and, you know, just being regarded as a very hard to settle ship. That wasn't the case. And it's persisted in this state for a few months now. But with the update um, that came out a couple weeks ago, Turpets was fixed. And basically how they fixed the Citadel issues where they lowered the ships, uh, lowered how high it sits in the water, and they also kind of reduced the chances of taking a critical hit to the Citadel on top of that. So it's not impossible to Citadel this thing, but the frequency of it happening should be a lot less frequent, which is good because this the Turpets and the Bismarck are kind of designed to be really durable, kind of hard to dislodge type of battleships. They both play differently, but armor scheme wise, they should be quite similar. Very hard to penetrate through the front, and you'll see for the most part here, whenever I'm angling, or whichever target I'm angling towards, I usually try to be pretty steeply angled directly at them. Now, the reason I picked this game, as you're watching in the background, we'll start to get into it a little bit here once we go over the rest of the buffs. But I picked this one because it has kind of the flow of the Turpids game that I think favors the ship and its playstyle. Early on, you kind of want to, you can exert yourself, you can put some pressure on people, but you don't want to be pushing in too aggressively. Now, they only have one destroyer in this game, and you can see it's not currently uh, believed to be on this end of the map, so. I don't have to worry about that, but in most games you are going to want to limit how far you push. Because if you're too aggressive, those destroyers will find you. You'll be the first, you know, the ship that's closest to them. First and foremost in their mind, they'll start trying to torp you till you're dead and <laughs> it's not going to work. But if you can kind of hang back, you know, medium long to long range for the first third to half of the game, take these shots, you can still get some damage done. I mean... You're going to see a lot of misses and some penetration issues and stuff like that at range. But the primary issue, of course, is the accuracy. But that's why I like to run Von Hipper on this particular ship. Because if you can reduce the ineffectiveness at range, you can keep the ship scoring some hits throughout the match. Whereas if you're going to focus com completely on defensiveness, uh, completely on durability, disregarding the accuracy, and you're going to, of course, be doing that with a silly X build, then your effectiveness early on is going to be limited and you're going to be tempted to push forward really aggressively. So that's kind of the trade-off. Of course you get one to two more heals depending on how high uh, your Celiax is, which is outstanding, you know. And it speaks to the second buff. Repair party consumables effectiveness were raised by 20% for restoring modules and 50% for restoring the Citadel HP. Now, Citadel HP, you can't restore very much. I think it was 10% is my belief, at least. That's what I've heard it was on the PC. So if you're you're doing 50% more in terms of repairing the Citadel, it's still probably going to be a small amount compared to the total damage you took when getting hit in the Citadel. But you're going to be able to repair more of it, and that's nice. So, you know, getting those extra heals with a Celiac or potentially a Hide... Um, if you have hide, those those are going to be enhanced due to this buff. Last buff, main battery reload timers reduced from 26 to 25. And I kind of have this ship set up 
a little bit favoring uh, the reload anyways. So playing the ship now since the buff with this build, I'm noticing very quick cycling through. It's you know it's not quite Sharon Horse esque, which can get damn near you know heavy cruiser levels if you want to spec it out that way. But very quick cycling guns, uh, especially for a tier seven kind of heavy brawler type of battleship. And you'll notice I had JoJo on the build if you're looking carefully at the start of the video. You can also swap him out for Madden and cut down that reload and the traverse even more. So. A lot of good benefits to the Turbots, and now having played it, you know, five, ten games, whatever, since the update, I think the ship is where I imagined it would be when it was released. So, in my mind, they fixed it. I think it's working as intended. It's not invincible, which shouldn't be invincible, but the durability is there to now utilize its playstyle, which is kind of, again, play kind of, I don't want to say passively, but... Um, selectively early on maybe is a good way to put it and then with an eye of kind of enhancing or increasing the amount of pressure you put on as the game goes forward if you can get laid into the game with a high HP pool that's outstanding then you can really exert your will as you will kind of see in this game but I don't want that to come across as me suggesting stay in the back stay in the background um, remain out of position to affect the game if you're familiar with my philosophies on the game, you should always try and be in position to be able to be affecting the game as much as possible. You know, Ideally, a perfect match, you would always be either shooting someone or influencing the game positively in some manner. So by preserving your HP, I'm mainly talking about armor angling. And foregoing shooting those back turrets, if it's going to put your ship in jeopardy you know by receiving return fire to the side of the ship you'd rather just cut down the offensive output by half early on and maintain your ship's health you know to a high degree and then increase the offensive capabilities as the waters open up a little bit more and you're going to utilize those high hp counts to kind of just push into the enemy and you know once you get into a situation like this where they don't have a destroyer. Now the only thing that's really keeping me back is cruisers that have torpedoes or potentially another turpets or something that has torps. But any ship that doesn't have a torpedo threat, if I'm angled in towards them, there's not a lot they can really do. They need to be quivering or you know turning and running away. Either way is either is a correct response. But I mean, a turpet's moving into you and you're not having torpedoes to keep it off is a very dangerous proposition indeed. Now a lot of my replays on Haven are on the weak side of like to explain how I play this map when you're kind of outnumbered early on. This particular game we were on the strong side so basically we just move forward about you know a quarter of the map to the west, cleared the side, pushed them off, They, the ships were either killed or removed to the north on that side and then we just turned around and go back to base. And you can just always count on maybe one or two people on your strong side to keep pushing through the base. That's fine. As long as you get some sort of pressure on the base, that's going to keep the enemy honest and give you multiple paths to victory. But you should always, not always, but usually going back to defend the base is going to be the better option. When you're defending, you're in control of everything. When you're attacking, when you're trying to cap, you're relying on teammates of yours that time and time again will let you down when you try and rely on them. So, in other words, choosing to defend the base, resetting the enemies that are on them, and, you know, that allows you to hang on to control over your own destiny. Whereas, getting on the cap, you're kind of just at the mercy of your teammates. Now, we have here we have a Bismarck versus Turpids close in range fight. Bismarck has better firecrackers, you can see. They're not doing a whole lot, but they basically what you need to regard the secondaries of the firecrackers as is just some random chance to set the enemy battleship on fire. And here you see we actually do get two fires on it. So the secondaries are good for starting fires. If you're in a situation where you have to use damage con, as we did earlier, then you're susceptible to getting these fires that stick to you. So that's the advantage the Bismarck has, but... Conversely, you saw we were able to hit them with the Torps, and that's the advantage the Turpets has. 
Now the Bismarck does have sonar. Whether or not this particular player had it or not and used it, we'll never know. But that'll help the Bismarck dodge those torps. But in general, I'd say advantage goes to Tirpitz when you're uh, talking about a close range battle between Tirpitz and Bismarck. So, so in my mind, the ship close range is afraid of uh, enemies with torpedoes on them. It's not afraid of anything else because as long as you don't push forward too aggressively, you can limit how much damage you're going to be sustaining um, by taking shots to the front. And you can just gradually wear down these enemies with the guns, you know, the secondaries are there, but they're not to be relied on. And then when you lean in on these guys, when you push them forward and wear them down, that's when you can start hitting them with the torps, and that's kind of the left hook, the knockout blow to any ship that, you know, allows you to get too close. So, Turpets, I think it's a great ship now. I was hesitant to play it before just because it had some pretty glaring weaknesses that weren't supposed to be there, and I didn't I don't like playing ships that I know are kind of busted in a bad way, so I'm glad they fixed this. Now I hope they look at the Bismarck and say it has the same exact problem. Let's give it the same exact fix. If they did that, then I think the German battleship line would be outstanding, and I think the German battleship line should be outstanding. So um, that's my advice to Wargaming. Just do what you did to the turbines, the Bismarck, and we're good to go. That's going to do it for this one, though, guys. If you did like it, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. A lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.